How's it going, everybody? This is Ronan47R, and we're back with another After Action Report. So thanks for joining me here. Uh, I almost feel bad about the teaser I sent out just a few days ago, but uh, here's some actual gameplay of the Tier 10 American Tank Destroyer, the T110E4, or as I like to call it, the Echo 4. And uh, we are opening up here on cliffs. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at how the map is, and it is considered a... Uh, well, it's considered a, a fairly open map there, um, you know, but it does have some some things to hide behind. So it's mixed. Standard battle. In this game mode, there are two flags and each team spawns near their own. The objective is to either eliminate the opposing team completely or capture their flag within 15 minutes to claim victory. All right. So again, we're doing standard battle. Pretty common, pretty common. We know how that works. And uh, it is a summer camouflage scheme, but, uh, you know, there are some things to hide behind, and there's some open spots. It's a, it's a really nice, uh, well, dare I say, mixed environment. So, looks like the crew is uh, the green team is heading over towards the, uh, well, it's 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 to the east in general. Um, and you never know, at least with randoms, um, you know, they're indicating they're going in that direction. Some have said all the way around the point at uh, E8, E9. Some of them were pointing at, uh, well, you know, G6, G7. Maybe they're going to go there and then, then make a left uh, northwest. You never know. So I absolutely do not want to be front line. I'm a tank destroyer, and I should be uh, shooting over the shoulder of my comrades. And, um, you know, Tier 10, uh, it's a whole different world, in my opinion. Um, so it's just a different animal. Uh, the folks that play there, um, the level of your crew, the level of the players, the experience of the players, um, <clears throat> It's just, it's just a really different world for me. Not to mention, of course, the technology itself. View ranges, uh, the amount of damage, um, you know, just the things that the vehicles, the tanks can do at this tier. So we do have only two tanks going around the point. I am attempting to, uh, to get around here, uh, to the end here, um, and have as much distance between myself and the enemy while sniping. Now, I made the choice to kind of, um, you know, I should be hustling into position, but the uh, the light tank at the top did a great job of um, distracting me. Just by nature of being up there, I have to stop and make a decision. But I'm going to go for some tasty targets over here. And I'm playing very sloppy because, to be honest, um, I have not played very much, and I'm just very excited to get back into it. So I had my tank fully broadside, but I just wanted to get a shot off and then reposition while the tank was uh, reloading. I find that it's easier for me to come up with a lot of things not to do when I share my after action reports with you. But whatever, you know, uh, when it's good stuff, I'll point it out and uh, all the many not good stuff I can point out too. And there goes the artillery, the M40, uh, M43 popped me really well. Now, to my knowledge, I don't think my crew is 100% yet. Um, I don't recall at the time of this particular recording, but, um, you know, as time goes on, I get used to the tank and my crew gets uh, all fired up and awesome like. We will only get better. All right, so it is fun just to get these treads rolling because it has been far too long for me. Okay, well, normally I like to go to the, on this map, I like to go to the one line uh, when it is a tank destroyer. Taking a look at the map, it is uh, Prokhorovka, it is uh, an open map, and it is summer camouflage. Um, it's still a uh, standard battle, so we don't really need to go into that again. And, you know, you know, I, I mentioned it before, and I'm just going to mention it again. <clears throat> Watch this. Hey, man, <laughs> you're slowing me down. Anyways, I'm trying to run all the way over there as quickly as possible, but I'm getting used to this tank. And, um, you, you know, maybe you do or don't share your opinion with me, but I feel like, and it's not a perfect pigeonhole, it's not a perfect 100% black and white answer, but I just feel like there's a certain culture, a certain feel, um, an untangible, uh, I don't know, uh, thing going on. You know, when you're in the tier 10s, the tier 9s, you know, it's kind of one world, and I don't mean to just make a black and white line between 8 and 9, or 9 and 10, or whatever, but I'm just saying, you know, the high uh, upper tiers, it's one animal, you know? You got that uh, three-fourths, uh, you know, area, you know, that seven-eight area, you got the six-five, fours, you know, threes, twos. Um, they, they seem to have their own little subculture, and, and by subculture, I just mean the feel, and it's, it's a mix of who you're playing against, 
Um, not only the human being, but also the crew is completely different in a tier nine than the crew in a tier two, you know, by nature of, unless it's a premium and they drop down a, you know, a guy who has like, you know, 10 perks and all that kind of fun stuff. But for the most part, I mean, it's a completely different world. And then of course the folks who are actually playing at tier 10, um, you know, generally, uh, you would got to figure that they've put in so much time into the game. They have a little more clue. I'm not saying they're good or bad, but at least they have a clue and experience. Um, you know, at least they have the time behind the controller um, to play a certain way compared to someone who's only a tier four, you know, a tier four or something. Anyways, so it's been a while since I've been playing World of Tanks. It's been about a week, and um, oh, I love that hit. Rolled a 731 on that guy. Um, but, you know, it's just trying to get back into the game. It's a perishable skill, you know. I feel a little bit, um, I don't know, feel like a noob. More newbie than I than I usually uh, feel. And then, of course, I'm playing a, a tier that I don't normally, you know, play. And then I'm in a brand new tank. So, you know, excuse, excuse, excuse. But whatever. I don't care. I just have fun, you know. It's fun to make the wheels go round and round on the bus. Well, it's not a bus, but it's a tank. And it's fun to make them go round and round. And more fun to make this little tiny shell go bang. Here we go. Let's see what we got. See, now here's what I was trying to get used to. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Is this my second game? I don't even remember. But I'm trying to get used to what is the feel for the, uh, the, the amount of time and flight for the shell. Because I was trying to plan for tanks in motion so that the shell, of course, would meet the tank. Um, you know, for future, for future reference there as they're traveling forward. So I was trying to get used to that. That'll just come with time. And then, let's see, what do we got? Nope. <laughs> and this guy's going to go downhill. I'm not going to, I just knew I wasn't going to catch that guy. It's a good spot, you know, but um, overall, the, our team is doing pretty well. Now, this guy did a spot on me because he came up over the hill and he was close enough. <clears throat> now, for those of you that are looking for some advice or whatnot, generally, you know, I don't pretend to uh, be the guru of tanks, nor do I play one on TV. But if I was really playing hardcore and more serious, because I'll just be honest, I wasn't. I was just messing around and just kind of like, this is fun. You know, I'm sitting on the couch and uh, just trying to get something recorded and take this guy for a spin and just, you know, get a feel for it, you know, take him around the block. But I was spotted, and notice I did not move at all. That's generally, that's not how I play, because if I'm spotted, I want to make them guess, you know, because they're going to take a blind shot, and even if they don't see me, they're going to say, well, you know, he was there earlier, so let's take, the, take, a, take a chance, you know. Anyway, so I'm moving up. My guys are moving up. Got a really bad hit. Had to use the large uh, repair kit. Not happy about that, but I did not want to deal with the reload. Now, for whatever reason, I am just getting nailed. I'm not, um, I, earlier I wasn't seen. I'm seen now, and I'm just getting hit, and it's just going south very, very quickly. I'm continually being spotted, so it's just a matter of time now. The, uh, and, there, and the other thing, too, I, I notice, just my opinion, but it just seems like, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but say you're, you're a bunch of zebras. How do they protect themselves? Well, they don't have claws and, and fangs and all that kind of fun stuff. They, they protect themselves by hiding amongst themselves. Uh, and I don't mean camouflage. I mean, you stick as a group, and it's hard for the attacker initially to figure out who they're going to attack because there's so many to choose from. They kind of get a little flustered and, and can't make a decision, you know, because you're running here, running there. Which one am I going after? And so on. So the same thing comes with tanks. If I am the only tank there, hit or miss, it's just a matter of time because everyone gets to focus on just one target, me. That's one of the benefits of rolling with a group, in my opinion, is that, yes, there's more guns in play, but it's also more targets for them to worry about because usually you are not going to run into a group of enemy or you know you're not going to see a red team all working together and, and all of them saying okay let's work on this tank concentrate fire on this guy concentrate fire on that guy it's not going to happen um outside of some sort of special clannish type map you know a game or something like that but you know these these random battles and even if they were platooning you know so you have three guys platooning yes that is very uh devastating a very powerful thing but um you know you don't run into that a lot i don't 
Anyways, getting back to the game, you can see I've been going back and forth uh, using this tank for defense. I am being spotted, and luckily the artillery's gone, but, you know, they know where, where we are. And this, uh, this tier 10 uh, Russian heavy tank here to my right, uh, this guy here, he was doing a great job. Um, I'm going to give him credit. I think I should give him credit. He was behind me. And he was using me and the dead tank for cover, but he was being kind enough, sportsman, um, mm, having good sportsmanship, where he was uh, not blocking me in. So I would take a shot, and then I would scoot forward, take cover. He would take a shot, you know, and I'd pull back. So that was nice. All right, well, anyways, I don't know if you caught it, but I got shot by a leopard from way across the other side. Uh, he shot me in the side, and I went bye-bye. So now we are on Abbey, and this is an encounter battle. Let's check out what the rules are. Encounter Battle. In this game mode, there is only one neutral flag under neither team's control, and teams spawn at opposing sides of the map equidistant from the flag. The objective is to either eliminate the opposing team completely, or capture the flag within 15 minutes to claim victory. Alright, well, you know, we're on Appy, like I said. Um, this is a very, very interesting map to me because, I don't know, I've had such good and not good games on this thing because there's so much variety. Um, dare I say it, it's it's kind of like when you make a choice on this map when you go I don't know let's say you go down the one line you know whether it's the one line or the two line but let's say you're going uh, down on the west side of the map you're halfway down the map and something's going on on the other side of the map you can't just shoot over like a flat open map I mean it's you it just takes a lot of time to get all the way around this map and so once it, it, to me it's kind of like a flip of the coin if, if everything's going well that's one thing. If it goes badly, it's hard to recover. In my opinion, it's very hard to recover and, and change um, in this map. All right. Well, anyways, getting back to this. And a um, little shout out to uh, USS Wisconsin 94. Um, not quite a review, my friend. Just an action, you know, after action report. Just a little taste. You know, I'm, I'm just getting into this thing. Um, but I hope you like, because I know this guy, uh, you know, he's a buddy of mine that uh, subscribes and whatnot. And he's... Uh, you know, he's working on the tank destroyer lines, so this is very interesting to him especially. Um, I get it. I like the gun on this thing. Uh, it's, 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 you know, again, you're tier 10, and it seems like everybody has a strong gun, but the reload is not that bad. Now, that sucked. I'm not going to blame him. Blank happens, you know, but um, it's one of the problems working with, you know, a bunch of randoms, and everyone's just thinking for themselves, you know, I don't know. I might have made the same mistake. I'm not going to say I wouldn't. Who knows? But I just hate when uh, you're you're aimed in. You're, you took the time to do what you need to do, and then somebody rolls in front of you right when you're uh, shooting. But um, you know, it's I like the mobility. I, I really do. I feel like it really gets up and goes. Um, I like the ability to have a turret. Although I can see where you know, because again, I've played with non-turreted you know tank destroyers. I can absolutely live without it. But it does offer that little bit of, um, or a lot of, um, fudging, if you will. Like, uh, you know, when you're, you're without a turret, you really have to get into a position and uh, kind, of, kind of be the claymore, you know, and, and face the enemy a certain way. Period. Done. You know? With this, though, there's a lot more um, variety. You know, I can, I can, like, look what I'm doing here. I'm scooting over here. He's at a 45 degree angle. Scoot back, scoot forward. Just like a regular tank, I don't have to scoot forward, turn the whole hull, hopefully zoom in on, you know, aim in on a shot, make my choice. Uh oh, gotta change my mind, you know, turn the whole, you know, hull a different way, go forward. It's just a lot more work. So nothing's for free in this world. And, um, you know, you want the armor, you want the stronger gun, you go with the, uh, typically, you go with the um, less, less mobile. Can't have everything, so. Incoming artillery shot there. That was kind of cool looking. So I just wasn't able to get my gun on that guy. Uh, look at these guys. This is what I mean. I don't know. It's that's crazy. Look at that. What, what, why are three guys banging each other and the other guy bangs? And it's just I don't know. It wasn't mission critical. Not like anyone was aiming in, but it just seems sloppy. It just seemed uh, you know. I don't want to sound negative, but it's just I don't know. Call me crazy. I'm crazy. Bam. Nine thirteen on that guy. What was that a tortoise? Sweet. That was cool. But like I said, it's a whole different world. Um, I mean, look at all these guys. They understand they're using cover and stuff, and they're all, you know, that part's down. What I find with most players, you know, 
it's easy to give advice, I know. Um, so forgive me for sounding like Mr. You know, well then be a better player. Well, I try, but anyways, getting back to giving the advice that nobody asked for, um, it seems like the first thing that people pick up uh, is the easier things to pick up, and the easier things to pick up is how to play, how to use your tank. Um, if you're going to learn something, they learn about side scraping. They learn about, um, you know, using a dead tank for cover and, and blah, blah, blah. That's like level one, you know? But what I also notice, though, is that, and most people play individually, and it makes sense. What it seems like is, even if you're not platooned up, even if you're not working, uh, you know, on a team that you're communicating with, what I notice is that people don't get the skill. I don't want to. Say, I want to say negative and say they never, but it just seems like they they hardly get the skill. Um, slow to come is working as a team, and if you can work as a team, and I think I have a decent decent ability to do this, is I can work with a team without even talking to them because it's, to me it's common sense. I'm situationally aware. There's a tank to my left or whatever, like the like the last round, you know, and I'm not going to box him in. Hopefully he doesn't box me in and we just, we're just we just going to take turns, you know? And I just pretend like we're communicating verbally, but you don't really need to because you know it needs to be done. And that's, when you can get to that point, the less that you have to talk, look at me, look at Mr. Talker, but, you know, the less that you have to talk while you're playing a game and explain everything. Yay, was that a 789? Um, you know, the quicker, the more efficient, everything just works better. You know, so I, I just feel that when you're playing a game, I don't care what tier it is. I mean, even these tier 10 games, these guys should be, uh, you know, these are the veterans, right? They've been around the longest. It just seems like even in tier 10 games, guys just don't work as a team. And so if there is one uh, wish list, one piece of advice is, uh, you know, it, it work as a team. Um, anyways, I, I'm going to refrain from bringing in my, uh, I, I, I coach the, the soccer team for my, uh, for one of my daughters and stuff. And anyways, you know, it's just, I'll refrain from bringing in the whole uh, concept of passing versus being the star and trying to be the only one that has the ball and score on your own. Do a lot better if you uh, use your uh, use your team. Well, we're not passing the ball in this, but I mean, just, you know what I mean. Just, <laughs> I don't care who gets the shot overall. It's just, you know, be the distraction. Some of these videos that I've come across um, even talk about taking hits for your teammates, but that's a whole nother level. All right, well, let's see what we did here. We finally won. Yay. <laughs> I had one positive thing to share. And, you know, for a tier 10, though, look at that. 57 grand? Yeah, 46. I mean, I know it's a times two, but 46 came in, what, third? For a, just a handful of games, not bad. Now, where did my crew go off to? Oh, I see. There they are. Okay, girls, tell them who they are if they're receiving this transmission. You are one of the 47 Ronin. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.